Good see you again. Nice to see you again, sir. So, um... Hi, everybody. I, I'm gonna ask the same question I asked last time. How has your character evolved and changed from Teen Titans versus Justice League to now? Um, well, the movie itself has changed quite a bit because it's not just introducing all the characters in. It's just an exclusively Teen Titans story. Um, and, and that way you really get to go into a lot of the characters' backstories. Um, and yeah, Beast Boy in particular, he does definitely change a lot. He goes through some pretty heavy stuff. And um, you see a level of depth of him that isn't really expressed often. Okay, and um, what was, like, how did you uh, change your um, performance this time from last time with the changes he's gone through? How did uh -huh. you adapt? Um, naturally, being in some of the more, you know, serious situations, it was a little bit more of a grounded performance in some parts. Um, really felt like some heart shine through. That's what I try to convey. Um, yeah, like it wasn't just really goofy and comedic. I really try to make it as real as I could, and I hope um, the fans read that. Okay. And my final question is, um, how is this film, without giving anything away, how is it going to change him from mm -hmm. now on? How, how does it change him for better or for worse? Oh, wow. Um, well, it does really talk about the movie, one of the themes is that you're kind of strengthened and you're kind of brought up by the hardships that you have to deal with. And it kind of brings all of the team together, the challenges that they share and relate with. So I think um, overall their bonds become a lot tighter and Beast Boy matures very quickly um, due to some of the circumstances in this new film. It's gotta grow up fast. <laughs> is there a particular animal that you, as Beast Boy, as voicing Beast Boy, that you would like to turn into, like in real life or just as a Ooh. character? Man, um, what would I want to be? Something that flies because I feel like it's just a very common human fantasy to want to like enjoy flight, so I'd want to do that. I'd be a dolphin. They're pretty kick-ass. Um, yeah, and be a jaguar. I would just do all like the best of each species, like the fastest and the strongest, just to experience that. And then I'd be a fly just to experience that too. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> serious in this film like yeah. you've seen it before. Do you miss doing more of the humor or do you feel like you still get to do that? You know what? I really enjoy being able to do the fun stuff the, the comedic quips, but I feel like as an actor it's a lot more fun, well not a lot more fun, but it's a different kind of fun to be able to really delve into what hurts with the character and what really makes him who he is. And that's something that I got to experience a lot, experiment a lot with this film. Who does Beast Boy like working with as a teammate most? Like is it Nightwing, is it maybe Starfire, is it, is it someone in particular, or is he just like working with everybody? Probably Blue Beetle. I think just um, their age range is maybe the closest. They're both just teen boys, they're always competing with each other. And while it seems like there's friction when they're like playing around, I feel like it's all in like good spirit. I think um, as friends, Blue Beetle and Beast Boy are probably the tightest. Um, yeah. What do you find most challenging about what you do? Most challenging about what I do. Um, well, one of the things that we got to work around is, especially when I'm sick, trying to get my voice into the right pitch. Um, I've been to set sometimes. We had to reschedule because I had a little bit of a sore throat. I was just pounding throat code T, and it wasn't helping. That's one thing. Um, another thing is creating the illusion that you're talking to people that aren't there um, because we're all recording separately and individually. Um, but aside from that, um, voice is it's fun and it goes really smoothly. Mm -hmm. I like voice stuff. Do you think that helps you, like, when you act, like, like in other projects, like, other than voice acting? Yeah, um, because acting, it's well, the vocals is a very huge part of. It's one of the biggest tools you have to use as an actor. You got to convey words, etc., like dialogue. Um, and when you're doing voice stuff, you're really focusing down on that one tool and really training that one part of the whole acting experience. So when you take that and you put it on live action, I feel like it helps with projection. It helps with um, being able to um, open up your lungs a little bit more. Yeah. Since you record separately, how does that affect the camaraderie that you have with your other voice actors? Um, obviously it would be really cool, it would be a blessing if we all got to shoot together, work with each other's chemistry, play off each other like that. But um, offset when we have meetings like cons and stuff like that, it it's really cool because I feel like we all get along. Um, and everyone is just like like the Teen Titans family, we all share that. So um, I wish we could spend a little more time together like working, but um, it's still nice with what we have.
Yeah, so, and, you know, it's good to uh, chat. Uh, you just got a million dollar. How much time do you spend a day doing this? So they're like, yeah, we got a lot of typical day life. Um, just uh, not on set. Huh? For me, a lot of my time is spent drawing. I like drawing a lot. Um, it's kind of not really related to, you know, the voice and the acting, but it's something that I really do enjoy. Um, training, when I'm working on a project, I spend, you know, hours just countlessly reading things over and over again, breaking it down. Um, but with no projects in mind, I, I just study a lot of shows. I study a lot of movies. I love film. So, um, I, I see it like entertainment and research at the same time. Mm -hmm. Did you notice, was there any, like, yeah. significant tonal shift between the yeah. last one and the last one? Yeah. Tonal shift, um, like, audibly, like, physically tonal. Probably, like, different, yeah. uh, Mm -hmm. No, no. Uh, there's no DDR. There is some. There is the uh, you know party scene in some point. It's a lot of fun, but it doesn't last super long because you know there's always conflicts. Um, but it definitely is tonally a little darker. Um, there's a lot more heavier scenes that you don't really get to play with in the previous movie. And um, I think it'll kind of hit home a little bit. Have you ever thought about playing any video games featuring like your character or anything like that? Oh, like playing a video game as Beast Boy? Yeah. <laughs> oh, that'd be so cool. One of my favorite fighting games, I'm not a gamer, but um, the game that I do really like playing is Smash Brothers. It's the only video game that I'm kind of good at. So um, if there was like that kind of game with the Teen Titans characters in it, I'd be all over it. So if anyone, any game producers hear that, get on that. <laughs> They go to E3 and tell them. <laughs> Make yeah, yeah. Play in there now. Handwritten postcard. <laughs> Brandon Sue says so. <laughs> yeah, he admits. <laughs> uh, what do you like most about Beast Boy, like as a character, and what do you admire about him? Uh, what do I admire about him? Yeah. I think he he's really upbeat. He's a lot of fun, and that's qualities that I kind of try to exude as a person. Um, I like to be, I guess, the life of the party. I like to be the one that puts a smile on everyone's face. But at the same time, I also like to be the one to also, you know, reel people in and have a serious conversation when, like, people look at me in my friend group for help sometimes. And I like to be that guy for them. Um, and that's something that me and Beast Boy kind of share. Do you ever get to get your own one-liner then in the ad lib? A little bit. Really? Yeah, there's a scene in there where they said, just make a bunch of noise. You're really excited. Just make noise, and you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. It's just like a bunch of... <laughs> I'm just making a bunch of happy noises, and that's uh, what you just talked about. You know? <laughs> it's all ad lib. And do you like that aspect when you get to voice act or even just act in general? Yeah. Um, I think as an artist, it's really fun to be able to take control of the creative process um, add your own input to it, so it's not just working with someone else's project, you're really making it like your own. And you're really building the character on your own. So I think that's a lot of fun, and I appreciate it. Would that ever make you want to maybe work behind the scenes at some point, whether it's in an animated movie or even just regular movies? All the time. All the time. It's always an idea that I have bouncing around in my head, that I want to be the one behind the camera, or I want to be the one in the writer's room. Um, yeah, I think as much as I like performing, I, I equally, if not more, enjoy creating. So um, that's definitely something I could foresee in the future. What was your very first voiceover job like? What was that like? How did you do it? This was it. Teen Titans was my first venture into it. A couple years ago, the first Teen Titans thing. I only do. Mm -mm. I only do. Um, I usually only do live stuff. I just recently got a voice uh, manager. She started putting out. And, um, I kind of fell in love with it. Yeah. So it was a really cool like break into the voice industry. Blew right into it. Then. Yeah. Yeah. With an awesome character like Beast Boy, like I'm, it's a blessing. Yeah. Definitely. Alrighty. <laughs> Excellent questions, everybody. Take Brandon with you. I'll come with you. Thank you for talking with me.